All right, so this morning I'm going to talk about where does the spirit of the devil come from? We know the spirit of God comes from above, but where does the spirit of the devil come from? In, in my opinion, it is important to understand that there is, the devil is, it's not a being. It's not like, um, you know, you think of God sitting on a throne above. There is no devil sitting on a throne below. All right. There is no being known as the devil. The devil is a spirit absent from God. All right. It's void of God. The devil, Satan, the serpent, the dragon, it's all the same thing. It's all a spirit that is void of God. Now let me show you some verses to uh, support that. All right, okay. So uh, one thing I think it's important to understand, um, you know, first of all, let's do it this way. Angels also are spirits. They are not beings. All right, so it's like Psalm 104, verse 4, who makes his angels spirits? It straightway says that angels are spirits. Now, of course, spirits can enter into men, women, children, so on. But they are not themselves beings. All right. It's pretty clear, but when, you know, I listen to some people talk about this and talk about angels and, and those sorts of things, I wonder if they have that understanding that angels are spirits, all right, and, uh, but the Bible's very clear, all right, angels are spirits. Now, uh, just as God can take on many forms, so can the angels of God right okay so I think people want to get confused about certain stuff all right but make no mistake about it angels are spirits all right now let's go look at something Jesus says if I can find a verse In Luke 24, verse 39, Jesus says, Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. Alright, so understanding that a spirit is not flesh and bones therefore the devil is not flesh and bones all right it's not a being of any sort it's a spirit now where does the spirit of the devil come from well I mean ultimately you could say it comes from God but it resides in the human heart you know of course God made the heart but without man's heart there is no devil all right so let me show a verse to support that um, go to the word toilet let's see if I can find it here in Matthew 15 verse 17 Jesus says do not ye yet understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the drought drought whatever that word is the toilet alright that's what that word means draft draft alright I don't see an F there, but whatever. 
All right. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Now think about that. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defiled not a man. So out of the heart comes evil. All right. And so you think of the devil and Satan, the serpent and dragon. These are all things that exist because of the heart of man. You take away the heart of man, you will have removed all evil. Right? And so <clears throat> when Jesus returns, he's going to destroy the heart of man and give those of us which are born of God a new heart. Just as he has given us a new heart and spirit right now though, to those of us that are born of the spirit of God. So again, uh, I just want to make that clear that the devil is not out there roaming around behind the bushes. The devil is inside the human heart. All right, sort of like uh, that movie When a Stranger Calls. You know, the babysitter, she keeps getting a call and she's looking out the window. And then at the end, she finds out the calls are coming from inside the house. So also is the spirit of the devil inside man's heart. Now, there's two verses I want to um, uh, share with you uh, in First Samuel 16. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's, and Saul's servants said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubles thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. Now, the spirit of, or the evil spirit, uh, came from the Lord. Right. So, this only can come and have effect if it enters the man's heart. And of course, the man's heart comes from God without God there is no heart and so the spirit God's in control of everything right now what's important to understand is that this evil spirit that didn't come from you know somebody sitting on a throne in the bowels of hell right there's no being that uh, you know God is trying to you know compete against or whatever you know there's just no devil except that which exists in the heart of man and now I, let's go to another one here yeah in first uh, kings chapter 22 and the lord said who shall persuade ahab that he may go up and fall at the ramagalitha ramath gilad whatever that word is and one said on this manner and another said on that manner and there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said I will persuade him and the Lord said unto him wherewith and he said I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets and he said thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so now therefore behold the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Now, I want to go back to Matthew 15, for, um, where he says, where Jesus says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. So again, here we see, I will put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. So, because the heart out of the mouth 
proceeds evil. Okay, so let's go back, if you will, to the serpent. All right, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yeah, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, You may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Knowing good and evil. Alright, this, when... Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is when evil was made because now they know what evil is and because they know what evil is it's in their heart to know and to do evil all right so again the devil is not roaming around behind the bushes peeking through your windows the devil is inside the house inside the heart because that's where all the evils coming from in the whole world from the heart now I could get I could really go into this you know spiritual wickedness and high places let's see if I can find something about that yeah Ephesians 6 for we've wrestled not against flesh and blood now think about that there's not a flesh and blood, devil, dragon, serpent, Satan. There's nothing of an actual being. It's all spirit. And the spirit of the devil is the absence of God. All right. And so in this particular verse where we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places that means um, the wickedness of man the spiritual wickedness of man of men that essentially control this world and manipulate this world and manipulate the people and we're up against it big time okay so uh, you know there's more I could get into uh, but if you have questions, you want to challenge me on anything, let's let's get into it, okay? Um, because I think it's important to understand. I think once you do understand, it brings you peace, right? Because you're not afraid of um, something unnecessarily, right? You're not afraid of, um, like, uh, is that the devil coming down the street, you know? driving a blue van or whatever right if you go to revelation 2 i know thy works and where thou dwellest even where satan's seat is and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith even in those days wherein antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where satan dwells all right so <clears throat> Without again, without the heart of man, there is no Satan, there is no evil, there is no devil, there is no serpent, there is no dragon. It's because of the heart of man. All right, so let's go to what is it, Matthew 16? Let me see if I remember this correctly. It's got to be somewhere here all right when Jesus asked his disciples who do men say that I am and you know and they say well some say John the Baptist some Elias some Jeremiah or one of the prophets and he said to them but whom say ye that I am and Peter said thou art the Christ the son of the living God all right, and then Jesus says unto Peter, 
That's right, upon this rock I will build my church. And the rock is the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then he, uh, and then he tells them, uh, you know, uh, that the Son of Man, or from that time Jesus shows how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. And, you know, Jesus is telling him that's what's going to happen. This is all part of God's plan. But Peter, Peter said, no, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let that happen. And Jesus turned to Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. He called him Satan because he was speaking against the Spirit of God. And what he was saying was void or absent of God. And therefore he called him Satan. And, you, of course, we can go to... Matthew 4 and other places and see where uh, Satan stood before Jesus or de the devil or what have you all right same thing um, and so the spirit was in a man and without man the spirit would never exist all right now um, Again, Jesus says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So I strongly believe that there was a man with him who the spirit of the devil had entered. All right, we we'll go to Job, for example. We can do this. That's a pretty good study, really, if you want to examine. Oops. You want to examine each mention. Yeah, I'm not real big on the devil. I'm more, I'm, I'm a lot bigger on the Lord God, or Jesus Christ, you know. But uh, I, I do think it, it's important to understand, you know, who the devil is. The devil is nothing compared to God. Nothing at all. Right? And if it wasn't for the heart of man, there would be no devil. Now, God has made everything that you see, including yourself, right? God has made everything. If it wasn't for God, there would be nothing. The devil is just the spirit that is absent from God. It barely exists. And Jesus has promised to crush that spirit forever when he returns in the clouds of heaven. Okay, so in Job, uh, for example, uh, they're presenting themselves before God and Satan came also among them right so that's just an example of one of the people that were coming to uh, make offerings to God was absent from God you know their spirit was absent from God that's not it's not like a creature with you know two red horns you know dressed in a red suit what have you it was just a man who did not have the Spirit of God in them. And of course, God is using that person as an example. Now, let's go uh, to, let's fast forward to the New Testament. Let's see if I can find. Uh, And Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. I right, know this is clearly talking about Judas, right? He's calling Judas a devil because, right there, he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Uh, for it was he that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Okay, so Judas was not saved, born of the Spirit of God. He was a devil being he was a person absent of God that God used to fulfill this mission if you will right so again Judas Iscariot is not the devil but he's called a devil because he was absent of God absent of the Spirit of God right and um, you know again, being used for a purpose so, um, again, if you guys have any questions, want to challenge me on this, let's talk about it. I think it helps. I really do. But it's crystal clear to me 
that the devil is just a spirit absent of God. All right, God bless you.